The story begins in the faraway past when the world was overrun by demon creatures. These creatures were led by a single person. This powerful individual was known as the Supreme Demon Leader. He was the commander of demons, goblins and all evil supernatural beings. His name was Nururihan and his name strikes fear in the hearts of all men. Years go by and that name still remains feared all around the world. In the present we are introduced to our main protagonist called Rikyo Nura, who is the grandson of the infamous evil Nura Rihan. however he is very different from his grandfather. Rikuo is shy, timid and small in stature, and while he is the third heir of the Nura clan he doesn't actually want to claim it. Important to note, Rikuo unlike his grandfather is actually three quarters human and his yakai side only comes out at night. All the yakai look up to him as their new leader but he struggles to live out such a future. We see Rikuo setting up a meeting with several yakai demons in his house. He reveals that he's gathered all of them here to tell them not to go into the abandoned building near his school, as he doesn't want any of their troubles to interfere with his school life. Before Rikuo heads to school he is met by the scary Juuki. Juuki is a very powerful warrior that has deep connections with Rikuo's family. He goes inside to meet Nururihan who is now an old man and they complain about Rikuo being too much like a human. Rikuo goes to his school, happy to just be a regular boy and live a normal life. While he is getting ready for class he overhears some students talking about rumored yakai sightings nearby. His classmate, called Kiyotsugu, invites Rikuo and a few other students to go and examine the old building tonight in search of monsters. Rikuo agrees as he wants to keep his friends from getting hurt. When night arrives, all the students go inside the building and Rikuo desperately tries to keep them safe from the rogue yakai. Eventually his family yakai come to his aid making Rikuo feel ashamed for not being strong enough to help his friends. Rikuo has a vision where he speaks to his demon side and it tells him that he must get stronger or he will fail. Elsewhere in the city rogue yakai are running away from someone but they soon get destroyed. We are then introduced to Zen who is also a yakai and an ally of the Nura clan. He then goes to meet with the everyone to talk about Rikuo and his future role as head of the family. Zen has a long history with the Nura clan as his family was always protected by it so he vowed to always remain loyal and help whenever he can. Rikuo arrives home from school where he finds out that Zen has come to visit. Rikuo has memories of Zen as they used to play when he was just a child. Zen has very special yakai powers, in that he has extremely poisonous feathers that he can shoot off like arrows and kill almost anything. Zen and Rikuo have a chat about his future and Zen is angry at him for not wanting to commit. Rikuo explains once again that he just wants to lead a normal life and being head of the clan does not interest him. Later in the day Rikuo talks to one of his demon friends and the demon explains that many yakai beings are not actually that strong, and they need protection just like humans which is where the Nura clan comes in. Zen decides to leave the clan home fearing for Rikuo and his future. On his way Zen is attacked by a serpent yakai named Hebedeyu. This yakai decided to betray the clan and has arrived to kill Zen. But Rikuo suddenly joins the fight to save his friend. The serpent yakai viciously attacks them and Rikuo transforms into his demon form. He is now a powerful warrior with white hair and a sword, and with ease he manages to defeat the enemy yakai and save his friend. Meanwhile, a drunken man is walking down the street when he notices something strange in a dark alley. He goes to investigate and ends up finding a deceased woman and an evil-looking man with a scary smile. On the other hand, Rikuo enjoys his time at school but his friends seem overly obsessed with demon activity, even planning another trip to his mansion as it is rumored to have many yakai there. Rikuo also notices that one of his classmates, called Yura, is really into yakai stories and she seems like a mystery. After school, Rikuo talks to his yakai helpers and directly instructs Oikawa to keep his friends safe from other yakai through the night. When Rikuo returns home he finds all the yakai having a giant party in the house, which he is displeased about to say the least as he must now stop them and clean up before his friends arrive. He tells all the yakai to behave and when his friends get there they are not allowed to harass or play any sort of tricks on them. After a couple hours of Rikuo getting the house cleaned up his friends arrive. His main mission is to keep them from exploring the house so they don't run into any yakai. Rikuo starts to notice that Yura is acting very strange and she seems to be aware of the demons. As the night goes on, it is revealed that Yura is actually an Onmyoji, which is a group of demon hunters who use spiritual power to combat yakai. After the party, a childhood friend and neighbor of Rikuo, called Kana Linaga, walks home with Yura. Yura explains how she lives alone but before they can talk more, out of nowhere they are attacked by a group of yakai. These yakai pretend to be humans but reveal their true nature when it's time to strike their victims. The yakai attacking Yura and Kana belong to the rat clan. Their leader is a tall and slender man and his main goal is to destroy the Nura clan and take over. His yakai attack Yura and in turn she summons a giant wolf creature to fight them. While the leader of the yakai is impressed he then takes Kana hostage so that Yura has to surrender, and the two girls are kidnapped and caged. 
Rikuo finds out what happened and goes to try and save them. When he finally arrives he meets the leader of the Rat Clan sitting on top of his throne and the girls are in cages. He demands that Rikuo writes a letter where he gives up his position as heir to the prestigious Nura clan. Rikuo will lose everything and the evil Yakai will end up taking over. On his way home Rikuo meets a member of the Yakai Cat clan, called Ryota Niko. We discover that her clan was brutally attacked by members of the Rat Clan, so Rikuo decides to help her as she is injured and can barely walk. When Rikuo eventually arrives home he thinks about his next move. He starts to write the letter just like he was ordered. In the meantime Nico is recovering from her injuries. Rikuo then realizes that if he doesn't do this his friends will be killed by morning. Soon after, Nico wakes up and prepares her weapons. She tells Rikuo that she is going to fight the rat clan on her own if she has to, causing Rikuo's yakai form to come out. He gathers his loyal troops and goes to save his friends. The rat clan begin panicking when they realize just how powerful Rikuo is. After the battle, Yura promises that one day she will catch and defeat Rikuo in his demon form. For a long time Rikuo didn't use his powers at all, but lately he has been using them a lot more and because of this he has started to feel sick. Rikuo falls ill and must rest to regain his strength while the rest of the yakai take care of him. Rikuo's trusted attendant Tsurara nurses him back to health while some friends from school visit him. Kana seems to have a little crush on Rikuo so she gets a bit jealous when she sees how close he is to Tsurara, the student council president and leader of the paranormal investigation squad, called Kiyotsugu, visits Rikuo and explains that the paranormal patrol has been seen preparing for a trip to Mount Kana to look for Yakai, and Yura is going along with them. The trip starts normally enough but it gets dangerous when they arrive at the mountain. Rikuo discovers the mountain itself is the domain of Juki who is a high-ranked member of the Nura clan, and was also the one secretly plotting to kill Rikuo. He was behind everything. Rikuo and his friends explore the mountain and soon reach a space where the girls can relax and the guys can search for ghosts. Rikuo knows that they need to be careful as the spirits here will most likely be very hostile. Rikuo and his friends are also joined by Tsurara who can be very useful in the field. Kana becomes even more jealous of Tsurara and Rikuo so she decides to join the group on their ghost hunt too. We then discover that Juki has also ordered his yakai to kill Rikuo and all of his friends. Mezumaru is the one leading Juki's demons and first they attack Natsumi and Sayori, who are members of the paranormal investigation squad. However, Yura comes to their aid and manages to save them. During the intense battle the groups get separated and Tsurara is almost put out of her misery. But at the last moment Rikuo shows up and saves her. He then prepares to fight the demon in front of him and defend his friend. On the other hand the demon is happy that he has a challenge. Meanwhile Yura has to defend the girls when three new yakai appear. They approach the girls and they set them as their next targets. Eitabu, the physically strongest yakai in the Nura household, is looking all over for Rikuo but just manages to find two of his friends and goes back to the inn. Rikuo begins the battle with a yakai called Gazumari. This yakai tried to kill Tsurara and is excited that Rikuo wants to fight him as he enjoys the suffering of others more than anything. In the meantime, Kana is totally unaware of the situation outside and is slowly walking through the inn looking for Rikuo. As she climbs the stairs she notices strange shadows moving around. She gets scared but it turns out that it's Rikuo carrying a wounded Tsurara. Rikuo tells Kana to take care of Tsurara as he must go outside and do something. Rikuo runs out to find Juki and finally fight him face to face. In a flashback Juki's motivations and past are revealed. A long time ago he was merely a normal human known by the name Yuma Kemaru. He was a noble child and was fantastic at everything. He could master any skill in a very short time and brought much respect to his family. But soon everything fell apart when his father tragically died and his mother left to live out her days in a monastery as she couldn't bear to take care of a child all on her own. Years went by and Yuma Kamaru had lived all by himself. One day he got news that his mother was sick so he decided to go and visit her. He had a long journey ahead of him but ever so badly wanted to see his mother one last time. However on his journey he met a strange person who turned out to actually be a yakai. This yakai was evil and tricked Yuma Kamaru to go down the wrong path. The path was long and Yuma Kamaru got lost but when he finally managed to find his way it was already too late, as he found out that his mother was already eaten by a yakai called Juki. Yuma Kamaru lost his mind and in a rage-filled moment he killed Juki. He could no longer control himself and everyone became his enemy. Yuma Kamaru was so unstable that he continued taking the lives of innocent travelers. As the years went by, his original name was lost and he became known as Juki. After some time he met Nururihin who was searching for Yakai to join his family. Juki wanted to fight him too but he was swiftly defeated. Nururihin then offered Juki something he had not had in years, a family. In the present, Rikuo finally finds Juki and they begin to battle it out. Rikuo is rapid in battle and manages to hold his own against him. And after a great display of action Rikuo finally manages to defeat Juki. But he does not kill him. 
Juki begins to feel sorry about his actions as he betrayed the only family he had. But he only did it because he truly thought he was doing the right thing. Juki is overwhelmed with guilt and decides to take his own life. But Rikuo manages to stop him just in time and tells him that even if he betrayed them, he still thought about the clan and what's best for it. Rikuo then forgives Juki and tells him to return to the clan with him. He decides that it's time he stepped up and led his clan to a better future. He goes to meet his grandfather and announces that he will become the leader when it's time. Rikuo also declares that Juki will be forgiven for his crimes and accepted back into the clan, making his grandfather extremely proud and happy as this means the prestigious clan is in safe hands. Some time passes and Rikuo is getting more and more comfortable preparing to become the leader of his clan. Meanwhile Kana starts to have some issues of her own. While at first glance Kana seems like a regular girl, her life was actually filled with problems. When she was just six years old, she found a mirror that was possessed by a yakai. This yakai was terrifying and had its eyes only set on Kana. The yakai promised that when Kana reaches the age of 13 it will return and take her away forever. That time has now come and Kana gets trapped in a mirror dimension lost and afraid. She is running out of options but soon realizes that she can communicate with the her world. A spirit doll was gifted to her by Kiyotsugu one of her friends and paranormal detectives. Kana figures out that she can contact her friends through the spirit doll. She manages to communicate her situation and begs for their help. Rikuo finally turns into his night yakai form and goes to help Kana who is almost consumed by the yakai. But Rikuo arrives at the last second and rescues her. Kana is finally free and can go home but she can't stop thinking about Rikuo's night yakai form. He was so handsome and heroic which cements Kara's feelings for him. She desperately wants to learn more about Rikuo, so she decides to spark a conversation with him while he is in his normal human form. She questions him about a lot of things like his night form making him feel awkward. We are then introduced to Hihi, who is a crucial member of the Nura clan and has been helping them for years. After an incident in the demon cat alley, Hihi decides to go and investigate. However his investigation is cut short when a mysterious attacker takes his life. When Rikuo receives the news he is heartbroken as Hihi meant a lot. The elders of the clan decide that there needs to be more bodyguards on Rikuo wherever he goes. Which leads to some embarrassing moments in school when Rikuo has to hide his yakai bodyguards. At school the huge festival arrives and many people are in attendance. Even Nurahian shows up. To all the students and people he is just an ordinary old man. They have no idea that he is the supreme demon lord. Yura also attends and while she is happy about her school life, she has been having a crisis of faith. She bumps into Nurarihan by accident and the two begin conversing. She is of course totally unaware of his true nature. Yura always thought that demons were evil and must be eradicated however some things have changed after seeing things that made her think otherwise. Nurahian tells her that demons are evil and she should be careful. Suddenly a gust of wind is felt and Yura realizes that someone is attacking them. A deadly attack is launched directly at Nururihan but Yura manages to get him out of the way. Several cloaked assassins show up around her ready to attack. These are the same people who killed Hihi previously. Yura stands her ground and with her magic she begins a battle with the assassins. It turns out that they are also yakai but their plans are unknown. During the fierce battle Yura gets distracted and Nurehun sees this as his chance. He unleashes his wrath onto the yakai and kills them in an instant, but after he vanishes into thin air leaving Yura alone. Nurehun has decided to follow up the leads and find out what is truly going on. In the meantime Rikuo goes back home where he is met by Tamezuki, the one who is behind the attacks. Tamezuki is very frightening and tells Rikuo that he should prepare himself as he does not have long left. Tamezuki promises that he will destroy the entire Nura clan and Rikuo. Rikuo is getting worried since his grandfather has been missing for a while. One of the yakai called Karasu Tengu is trying to search for the supreme commander but cannot find him anywhere. Rikuo is also worried because he now knows that the Nura clan is in serious danger. While drinking tea he remembers his conversation with the father of Tamezuki, who is called a Nugumijiabu Danuki, and his promise to destroy the clan. Rikuo decides that he must be brave for his fellow yakai to maintain order and peace until his grandfather returns. Elsewhere, Tamezuki meets with his demon warriors and they form a great plan of attack. Tamezuki wants to take charge of the clans now that the Nura clan has no leader, so he decides to send his yakai warriors into Nura territory. Their aim is to attack civilians so that the Nura clan has no choice but get involved. That same night, strange things begin occurring in the city. Buildings start falling over and people in the park become terrified after noticing the shadows. Yura is also there and feels an evil presence all around. Meanwhile back at the Nura clan headquarters, everyone is discussing what their next move is. It seems that Tamezuki has decided to slowly take over their territory. So Rikuo says to his fellow yakai that they need to remain calm in order to figure out the best course of action. The following day at school Riku is anxious the whole day. He knows that when the sun goes down the war will begin. 
and he doubts if he is worthy and capable enough of leading the yakai in a full-scale battle. He meets with Yuka in school and she tells him that strange things have started to happen. The only good news is that so far the demons have not hurt any humans, but soon that might change. Rikuo goes back home with his bodyguards and they watch the sun go down. That same night Tamezuki shows up with his demon warriors and announces that the war has started. Tamezuki declares that he is the lord of the 88 demon gods and his goal is to become more feared than even the Nura clan. His demons are terrifying and even the yokai from the Nura clan are scared of them. Rikuo tries to predict the strategy of his enemy but before he can do so, a warrior in a red cloak shows up called Shaoi who is part of the Hihi clan. He tries to defeat Tamezuki and his demons but fails miserably. One of the evil demons shoots fire from its mouth and burns part of the Nura clan's HQ. Tamezuki then decides to leave and promises that next time they will not be so kind and will finish the clan for good. Rikuo promises that nothing like this will ever happen again and he tells his yakai that they must protect their home. The following day at school Yuka and Rikuo talk once again and she tells him that she feels something evil is coming. Rikuo pretends that he has no idea what she is talking about. Meanwhile the supreme leader and Rikuo's grandfather is far away in the mountains, planning his next move away from all the conflict. Rikuo tries to spend some time with his friends but his duties take him to witness a yakai duel. He goes into his night demon form and Yura follows him. When she arrives at the scene Rikuo is already gone. Tamezuki is now preparing his full-scale attack on the Nura clan as he is gathers his armies, with the goal of finishing the war as quickly as possible. Tamezuki and his allies keep talking about the rising of the Shikoku demons. Meanwhile in his yakai form, Rikuo has a discussion about Tamezuki and the Shikoku demons with the elders of the clan, but soon Dawn arrives and Rikuo turns back to his human form. He realizes that if Tamezuki wanted to he could have already launched a massive attack. So he concludes that something else must be going on and maybe they are planning something even worse. Kiyotsugu meets with the paranormal patrol and it is revealed that he has discovered something very interesting in his yakai investigations. In a town called Yukio, the shrines have been getting destroyed for some time now and there is a theory that a yakai is behind it. We then discover that Tamezuki and his demons have been going into town and destroying the shrines as it is part of their grand plan. Yura has actually also been doing her own investigation and she finds a destroyed shrine before the patrol arrives. Rikuo and Oikawa talk about what might have caused the shrine to be destroyed. Yura on the other hand is starting to notice strange behavior from Rikuo, so she starts to theorize that maybe he is having an affair with someone. The patrol group tries to split up and look for clues but they do not find anything. After a while Rikuo starts to realize that it's always better to stick together, as it may help him in his upcoming battle with Tamezuki and his forces. Meanwhile Nurarihan arrives in Shikoku where he meets with Inugami Jiabu Danuki. This is the supreme commander of the Shikoku region. He has come to talk with him to find a possible solution for his own troubles in his clan. That same night, another member of the paranormal investigation squad called Jiro finds Sadamogi who is trying to put a deadly curse on Kiyotsugu. Sadamogi is saved just in time by Terurai Oni and Inuhu who are executives of the Yakuza Yakai and Shikoku. We also find out that Sadamogi is actually a Shikoku demon and he is hunting other demons trying to kill them. Some time passes and Rikuo is worried for the members of his clan as things get more dangerous. He spends time with his friends as much as he can but he is worried a lot. Meanwhile, some of his demon warriors have managed to protect certain shrines from being destroyed. Later in the day Natsumi goes to pay her respects to a local god called Lord Senba. She has been going to that same shrine since she was a child so even if there is danger she has to pray there. While Natsumi is praying the scary Lord Sadamogi arrives. He grabs her by the hand and tells her that she must pray to him and no one else. Just as he tries to kill Natsumi, one of the demon warriors that works for the Nura clan arrives and stops him. In the battle Natsumi is gravely injured and ends up in the hospital. Rikuo and his friends go to visit her but they are worried as she seems to now have a curse on her. Rikuo promises that he will save her so with the help of his demon warrior he goes to hunt Sadamogi. Finally they catch him and Rikuo transforms into his night yakai form. They manage to defeat and kill Sadamogi which lifts the curse from Natsumi. The news regarding Sadamogi's death gets around and soon all the Shikoku demons find out. They decide that now is the time to kill Rikuo as he is ruining their plans. They all decide that they must unite and attack at the same time but one of the Shikoku demons is in Yugami and he does not work well with others. He is so focused on killing that he does not listen to their orders and goes after Rikuo on his own. Meanwhile Rikuo's grandfather is still talking to the other supreme leader telling him all about Tamezuki and his war. Inugami has decided to try to bait Rikuo into coming to him so he sets a trap for his friends. The paranormal patrol club finds out about another abandoned building where ghosts might be. Rikuo also joins them on their mission but they have no idea that they are walking into a trap. The kids all arrive in the scary building and start exploring it. 
Rikuo is still in his human form as it's still daytime. Finally, Rikuo gets separated from his friends and Inugami reveals himself. He tells Rikuo that he will kill him and his friends as humans are not worthy of life. Rikuo's bodyguard Yakai arrives at the scene. Inugami then unleashes his Yakai attacks at Rikuo and his bodyguards. In the meantime, Yura is defending Rikuo's friends from other Yakai attackers. During the battle, Inugami decides to reveal his true form, which is much more scary and deadly. The bodyguards that are helping Rikuo try to fight back against Inugami, but they are no match. Inugami is now too strong for them and he badly injures them. Finally, he is faced with Rikuo and is ready to kill him. At that moment, the sun sets and the night time arrives. Rikuo now transforms into his night yakai form and is really powerful. Inugami is surprised but he keeps on attacking. Now his attacks are not doing any damage. Rikuo in his demon form is far too powerful for Inugami. Just as Rikuo is about to kill Inugami, Tanuki appears and saves her demon friend. They both escape and Rikuo realizes that a lot of his friends are hurt. Tomezuki has now entered into the final phase of his plan. His demons have now destroyed almost every shine in Yukio and all the local gods have been destroyed. The Nuraklan is weak as many of its members are either dead or injured. Now is the time to start the final attack. Tomezuki gathers all of his demons and they prepare for a giant attack against Rikuo's clan. Rikuo and the elders of the Naru clan find out now know that the war has officially started. Finally, after some preparations, Rikuo decides that he will lead his armies and stop Tomezuki. Rikuo talks to his yakai form once more and he promises that one day he will become a great leader. His yakai form still thinks that Rikuo has a lot to learn. Rikuo now transforms into his demon form and he prepares his soldiers for battle. Rikuo and his yakai arrive and the final war begins. Many demons start to fight each other and Rikuo in his night form is really powerful and deadly. Rikuo is looking for Tomezaki and he is trying to hunt him down. They finally meet and start to fight and Rikuo seems to be stronger. Their fight is interrupted when one of the demons working for Tomezaki, called Yasuzume, gets involved. Yasuzume is extremely powerful and he manages to injure Rikuo badly. Yasuzume has the special power to blind her victim which proves to be a big problem for Rikuo. Tomezaki then offers Rikuo a place to join him in his conquest, but Rikuo refuses as he believes that Tomezaki is truly evil. So Tomezaki decides that he has had enough of the talking and goes in for the kill. In the meantime, Surara has been trying to find Rikuo for a while, but in the midst of the battle she got lost. She arrives just in time and saves Rikuo from certain death. Yasuzume then attacks Surara and blinds her as well. Surara and Rikuo are now both blind but they manage to continue fighting and they defeat many of Tomezaki's soldiers. Surara finally manages to break the spell that Yasuzume has put on her. Surara uses her freeze powers and freezes Yasuzume. Ikuo leads his clan to fight the Shikoku Yakai. The Shikoku Yakai want to kill everyone and be the only rulers of the demon world. Tomezaki realizes that he is losing the battle so he decides to take drastic measures. Using a cursed hammer he begins slaughtering his own soldiers to absorb their power and use it for himself. Everyone is stunned by this as Tomezaki shows he has no care for his own soldiers at all. Inugami takes Kana as a hostage but she is soon saved. Tomezaki then defeats Inugami to absorb his powers. Finally Rikuo faces off against Tomezaki who is now fully powered up. Rikuo communicates with his other half and they agree to work together and rule as the clan leader. Rikuo finally accepts full responsibility which gives him an edge in battle, and the final fight with Tomezaki begins. Now as he has grown and matured Rikuo can fight Tomezaki even if his form runs out. And this brings the anime to an end. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Until next time, take care.